In this video, we're talking about how to find the values of trigonometric functions when we're not dealing with sine and cosine functions, but instead functions like cotangent, cosecant, and tangent. So we're going to be relying heavily on the unit circle in this problem, so if you have one, go ahead and pull it out. The first example we're going to be doing is cotangent of 4 pi over 3. So what we want to do is take each of these trig functions and we want to manipulate them until we can get them in terms of sine and cosine. So cotangent, remember, is the same thing as 1 divided by tangent. So if we wanted to, we could rewrite this as 1 over tangent of 4 pi over 3. That's the same thing as cotangent of 4 pi over 3. Then we know that tangent is the same thing as sine divided by cosine. So we could rewrite this without changing it. And instead of tangent of 4 pi over 3, in the denominator over here, we could have sine of 4 pi over 3 divided by cosine of 4 pi over 3. Now remember when you're dividing by a fraction, we have 1 divided by a fraction here, instead of dividing by a fraction you can multiply by its reciprocal and that's the same thing. So this value here is the same thing as 1 multiplied by, and then we're flipping this fraction upside down, cosine of 4 pi over 3 divided by sine of 4 pi over 3. Now, of course, multiplying by 1 has no effect, so we can go ahead and ignore that. And now notice that we have everything in terms of cosine and sine. So now what we want to do is go to the unit circle and look for the angle 4 pi over 3. When we find the angle 4 pi over 3, what we see is that the point along the unit circle where we have that angle is the point negative 1 half, negative root 3 over 2. And remember that points along the unit circle, this is the coordinate point x, y. So x is negative 1 half, y is negative root 3 over 2. But points along the unit circle are given in terms of cosine and sine. So cosine at this angle is the x value from the coordinate point. Sine at that angle is the y value from the coordinate point. So when we say cosine of 4 pi over 3, we can take the x value, and instead of that in the numerator, we'll have 1 half, negative 1 half in the numerator. And then sine at 4 pi over 3 is the y value, which is negative root 3 over 2. Now remember before, when we were dividing by a fraction, instead of doing that, we could multiply by the reciprocal. So we're going to say negative 1 half multiplied by 2 over root 3. So we just took that fraction from the denominator and flipped it upside down. Now what we see is that we can get some things to cancel here. So the negative signs are going to cancel with one another and become positive. The 2 we can cancel from the numerator and denominator, and we're just going to be left with 1 over the square root of 3. Now while it's true that this is the value of cotangent of 4 pi over 3, we do want to rationalize the denominator, which means get all of the square roots out of the denominator. And the way that we'll do that is by multiplying this by root 3 over root 3, which is the same as multiplying by 1, so we're not changing the value. And the result then is going to be root 3 in the numerator, and in the denominator, root 3 times root 3 is 3. So if we want to be proper about the way we write the final answer, instead of leaving it as 1 over root 3, we'll rewrite it as root 3 over 3, and we can say that this is equal to root 3 over 3. Now if we want to find cosecant of negative 7 pi over 4, again we would go to the unit circle. And remember that when we're given a positive angle, like positive 4 pi over 3, or positive 31 pi over 2, we move in a counterclockwise direction around the unit circle. When we're given a negative angle, we're going to start at the positive direction of the x-axis, and we're going to move in a clockwise direction, 1 fourth pi at a time, until we've gotten to 7 of them, because we have 7 times 1 fourth pi that's going to get us all the way back around to positive pi over 4. In other words, negative 7 pi over 4 is the same as positive pi over 4. And if you look at the unit circle, you can see that. So we can actually rewrite this as cosecant of positive pi over 4 without changing the value at all. And then what we need to remember is that cosecant is the same thing as 1 divided by sine. So we could rewrite this as 1 over sine of pi over 4. Now if we go to the unit circle and we look at the angle pi over 4, or the angle negative 7 pi over 4, they're the same place, the coordinate point there is root 2 over 2, root 2 over 2, 
Remember that when we want to find sine of the angle, we're looking at the y value from the coordinate point. So sine of pi over 4 is root 2 over 2. So this is going to become 1 over root 2 over 2. And again, because we're dividing by a fraction, we can instead multiply by the reciprocal, and we get 1 multiplied by 2 over root 2. Multiplying by 1, of course, has no effect. And then we can rewrite 2 as root 2 times root 2. Once we've done that, then, we can cancel the root 2 from both the numerator and the denominator. And the only thing that remains is square root 2. So cosecant of negative 7 pi over 4 is equal to square root 2. Now this last example, tangent of 31 pi over 2. The first thing we need to do is reduce this angle, 31 pi over 2, so that the angle is between 0 and 2 pi. Obviously 31 pi over 2 is many rotations around a full circle. So if we think about for a second the unit circle, and we'll just draw a basic circle here. We start at the angle 0. This is 1 pi over 2. This is pi, or 2 pi over 2. This is 3 pi over 2. And then we get all the way back to 2 pi, which is the same thing as 4 pi over 2. So in other words, when we start at 0 and we go all the way around the unit circle, we do a full 2 pi rotation, which remember we can think about as the same thing as 4 pi over 2. So if we want to find this angle, what we can say is that we get 4 pi over 2 when we rotate around once, 8 pi over 2 when we go around twice, 12 pi over 2 when we go around three times, and we could keep counting up by 4. So this is 16, 20, 24, 28 pi over 2. So when we get back to this point after seven full rotations, we're at 28 pi over 2. This is 29 pi over 2. 30 pi over 2, and 31 pi over 2 when we get back to 3 pi over 2. So 31 pi over 2 is coterminal with, or it's the same angle as, 3 pi over 2. So instead of calling this tangent of 31 pi over 2, we can call it tangent of 3 pi over 2. Remember that tangent is the same thing as sine over cosine, so this is going to be equal to sine of 3 pi over 2 divided by cosine of 3 pi over 2. And if we look at the angle 3 pi over 2 along the unit circle, the coordinate point there is the point 0, negative 1. In other words, cosine of that angle is 0, and sine of that angle is 1. So if we make substitutions here, what we see is that sine of that angle is a negative 1, cosine of that angle is 0, so the value tangent 31 pi over 2 is equal to negative 1 divided by 0. But we can't have 0 in the denominator of a fraction, so this whole fraction just busts our problem. And what we can say then is that tangent of 31 pi over 2 is an undefined value. It's undefined. We cannot find the value of it because we found this 0 in the denominator of the fraction. Could you use some extra help with math? Click the button to head over to calculusexpert.com. It's where I've collected and organized all of my best resources, including exclusive videos, notes, quizzes, and even formula sheets. It's the perfect resource whether you're struggling, or if you want to take your learning further, or even if you just want to save yourself some time studying. So check it out, because I know it'll help.